Daniel Ezra on the squash court was a combination, in present day terms, of, of the best way to describe it would be a Roger Federer and a Rafa Nadal. I mean, Daniel was physically gifted, he was mentally gifted, he was a southpaw, he, he had a combination, he had the grace and the, and the touch of Federer, and he had the bravado and the court sense and the power of, of Nadal, and he had the athleticism of both of them. The qualities that made Daniel great on the court were he was able to identify during the course of, of a match what was going well and what was going wrong, and he would make adjustments during, during the match. He was very objective despite the emotion, because oftentimes he was playing well into the team match where his match counted, and he was invariably playing a national singles champion or a finalist or a fellow All-American, so the matches were grueling and really tough. And he was just able to uh, figure out what needed to be done under pressure, and he did it with, with, a, with grace, with sportsmanship, uh, with class every time. There are many memories that stand out about Daniel as a player. One in particular, I think, singularly demonstrates who he was as a, as a person and a player. He, he lost, the only time he lost a team match in four years was in the final of the national team championship in 1997. And he came off the court, keep in mind this is the first time he's ever lost, came off the court and said to me, I'm sorry, I tried my best, how are we doing as a team? And I said, the match is tied at four all, Andy Walters on the court, whoever wins that wins the championship. And he, no sooner have I finished saying that, he's flying down the courts at Jadwin Gym, and 10 seconds later I can hear him yelling in support of his teammate Andy, who did win the match. Um, that's, what I, that's, that's a great memory of Daniel. It says exactly who he was. He put the team first always, despite his individual desires or goals. It was always about the team.